hybrid meetings that, that will be recorded. So it is already starting the recording. So I'm going to come over here and do a share screen. And we will be adjusting our lights here in just a second. Okay, there we are. And I am going to, to move this uh, right here. There we go, the meeting controls. Okay, so again, I want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, we're getting started. Uh, my name is Mary Jane Berry. I heard that some of you, this is your first time to come to our meeting. And I'm really glad you don't have to shout out your names, but can you just have a raise your hand if this is your very first meeting? Okay, I've got one, two, three, four. All right, welcome. And we are glad because everyone here remembers the first time they came to the meeting. And so many times people think support group meetings are depressing. You sit around in a circle and woe is me. Well, in actuality, ours is going to be more of a, a very positive seminar type fashion. And this is very, very typical of our meetings. We meet on the fourth Thursday of every month. And my name is Mary Jane Berry. And my connection to Parkinson is my husband. My husband has been living with Parkinson's now for a little over 20 years, and he is that handsome man that's giving out the door prize tickets. So uh, be sure you get a door prize ticket from him. Yep. And uh, yeah, I don't know what he promised this time. He always promises more than I can deliver regarding door prizes. <laughs> but uh, but he has fun, and that's, that's the important thing. All right, so moving right along here. Uh, that's the door prize he's talked about. Uh, our meeting is, is this is going to be great. Let me see, I've got to get rid of... Um, Unless this meeting is being recorded, I'm going to put OK. All righty. Now maybe we can see this a little bit better. I'll move this over a little bit farther. OK. And if y'all would, if my AV team would spotlight uh, just me as speaker and then when our speaker comes on. OK. And then I'll change the view there. OK. I think they're working to get that spotlighted. Okay, so the agenda for today, of course, is getting started. You notice we always have 2.30 time. The 2.30 time is really meant to be uh, a social time to walk around and meet our sponsors. We've got some great sponsors, and they make it possible for us to bring these meetings to you. Because as you can see, setting up with the audio visuals, plus uh, doing a donation back for the facility and having a few of the refreshments. That's why our sponsors are so important, but it's a chance for them also to share about their product, and I'll go into that a little bit more. The welcome introduction we'll be getting right into. Uh, we're going to have vocal exercise. We're going to do something a little different. This meeting, we're doing a few things different. First off, we're going to have exercise that will be done right before our speaker, because I've noticed that sometimes after our speaker, you guys get up and leave before we can do exercise. <laughs> so we're changing that a little bit. So in all sincerity, we'll have a, a brief exercise right before our speaker, because that probably bore you with all my announcements. But there's so much going on, and I'll be sharing that with you. But we're very, very fortunate to have a national recognized speaker, a Dr. Patricia Sulak, and you will get a chance to hear her in just a few moments on the science of healthy aging. And then just closing in the next meeting. But of course, as a reminder to everyone, and of course, our speaker might not realize this, these folks are awesome because they do get a little exercise at the end of the meeting by helping me put up chairs. And that's the agreement I have with the church is to put all of my stuff up because they have a basketball game in here starting a little after five o'clock. So that's just part of it. But we work well. Hey, I have T-shirts in the back. I have Laura. Lauren, would raise your hand real good. There she is, our T-shirt lady. She said the other day she was somewhere and somebody recognized her and they said, Oh, your t-shirt lady. And so she says she officially has a second name now. That's super. All righty. And again, I talked about our sponsors. So our sponsors here, I'd like to just be sure and introduce Abby. Abby, and we have Jonathan. And Jonathan, if you'll stand up, y'all can go talk to him. And he's great. As you know, normally we have Miss uh, Aaron here. And I tried to, I didn't get a picture of the baby, but I got a little baby feet right there beside her. She did have a little girl. And uh, so she's very, very excited. And, and I told her that babies are very welcome at our GAPS meeting. So maybe she'll bring a baby the next time. 
But anyway, thank you for coming. Jonathan flew in from Florida just to be here with us today. So this is super. I uh, wanted to be sure and tell you something about this. And you saw this in an email I sent out on Monday. There's a lot of surveys out there. Well, Abby is conducting a survey also. And this survey, you they were able to compensate you with $75 for a good 15 to 20 minutes to just answer some questions. So uh, again, it's great and a wonderful opportunity. Please go to my email and uh, get click on that survey and it's very easy. I've done it too. So, okay. And Bill, we have Jill. Jill's right over here. So you can stand up and wave. And uh, this is really, really good to talk about Ritari. A lot of you guys are on Ritari. So if you would like to talk to someone, this is an opportunity for you to speak to the, to the um, pharmaceutical representatives and to ask all the questions you have about that particular drug. So on either one for these fellas. So Jill, thank you so much for coming. Amy Dukes is with Acadia. And unfortunately, Amy was not able to make it today. But I did want to recognize her because they have also be their sponsor for us. David Ott and Candace are with Medtronic. That's one of the deep brain stimulation uh, folks. And again, they unfortunately were not able to make it. But they're sending their best. Will, we always have Will with Supernus. Okay, Will, raise your hand. Will is just wonderful and a great supporter for us. And you can see they've got quite a few uh, drugs here. But uh, if you'd like to talk to him, he's got a lot of information to share. And uh, it's just, it's wonderful that we have the support here in Georgetown with these, these fellas. So thank you so much. Abbott, Abbott is another DBS group. And again, unfortunately, Donnie and Damon are not here. I do want to let you know, I have just heard though that Damon is moving to the East Coast. Yeah, so he'll have a new beginning, but uh, I, I don't know his coverage, so we'll keep you informed on that. Boston Scientific, again, is another supporter for us, but uh, they're not here. Uh, this is uh, Rosemary and Suzanne. And then we have Accorda. Accorda is wonderful. I've got uh, Glenn here. Yes, uh, Accorda has the drug, the inhaled version of carbidopa levodopa, which is basically the embresia. So if you would like to talk to him about that, it's kind of a, one of those off, uh, helps with off episodes. So he's right over there with a lot of information. Okay, the Grand Living. The Grand Living is where we have a lot of our um, meetings at, and we got a meeting coming up. It's gonna be the Grand Living. I don't see the representatives here, but it's just, y'all know, just right across the street and down just a little bit, but they're, they're a strong supporter for gaps. <laughs> Another one before I jump into Parkinson awareness uh, disease, I'm going to tell you about that, but I'd like for Janie to stand up. Janie is our GAPS vocal exercise person, and I have another slide for her in just a moment, but Janie will be leading the exercise I talked about, but she also represents all care therapies. So this is both physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. So if you have any questions, feel free to go to her. And the slide I have up right now is uh, April is Parkinson's Disease Awareness Month. There's a lot of stuff going on. And if you noticed already in my email I sent out on Monday, that's what I sent out to you. We have a lot of things that are going to be associated with this. This is just to bring awareness, but not only for us to bring it to the community, but for y'all to bring it to your family and your friends to let them know a little bit more about Parkinson's. I mean, they see you, but a lot of times people don't fully understand it. So in any of our, any of our activities or events that we have, you're welcome to invite other people. So please do. Uh, with that said, uh, I was fortunate enough to be on a panel during the screening of this movie, and it's called Matter of Mind, My Parkinson's, and it was at the Austin Film Society. They will be showing it on April 8th on your PBS station. I'm not real sure the exact time, so on April the 8th, if you would just like to look at your TV channel to find out, it was really a good movie. Uh, it kind of just uh, profiles three individuals as they are living with Parkinson's and how they found out and what's going on. And when I was the speaker, which was just this past Sunday on the panel, there's a lot of things that you can relate to the movie. And there was a lot of questions that, that folks had. And it was just a, it was just another way of having a better understanding. Uh, now, and we're here, right here in Georgetown. GAPS will be hosting a film premiere. We will be having this film on... Friday, April the 12th, and it will be at the Grand Living. It's totally free, 
and the movie starts at two o'clock. Uh, we're going to open the doors at 1.30. I do need for you to register. We're going to have some refreshments. We want to make sure that we have a good showing. But uh, on the email that I will be sending out again, so you'll get one on Monday for sure. We have plenty of time. But I have a sign-up genius. That's what we use to sign up for our educational luncheon. So anyway, it's already set up, and we will be doing it. This one, no, you remember Dr. DeLeon? Dr. DeLeon was our speaker last month. She's actually in this movie. And it's a wonderful film to learn more about how these folks who were all young on set, that means less than 50 years of age when they were diagnosed with Parkinson's and how they're living with it. Okay, a caregivers meeting uh, for April will be April the 11th. Again, all you caregivers are welcome to come to it. This one is more of a very uh, informal format, no presentation or anything. We do sit around. But I got to admit, we don't go, woe is me. There's a lot of laughter and just a lot of sharing. So I encourage you, if you're a caregiver, please feel free to come and check this out. Uh, we are definitely still, we've got some active committees going. And I see one of my committee leads is right here. I've got uh, Karen. Karen, if you want to stand up. Karen is with our fundraising and socials. She's one of our board members and has just done already a, a fabulous job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But anyway, if you want to just try to get in, you don't have to leave the, the committee, but it's, we take your input. We love it. Uh, also, we have uh, Patty. Patty's here. There's Patty back there. Patty's doing governance, all the paperwork. Anyway, she's pretty much got it all done, so it'll be an easy one for you. But if you want to be in her committee, you can also. And then we just have a lot of other stuff going on. So feel free to let me know if you would like to be on any of these committees. Okay, I wanted to be sure and just make a distinction between the email, the newsletter, and the website. If you have not been to our website, check it out. We are doing a lot of stuff to get it up to date. And in fact, I just got a phone call from the American Parkinson Disease Association, home based in New York, that they were reviewing our website and they loved it. And they were very complimentary of it. And I tell you, it's just super. So there's a lot there. Check it out. Check it out. And I'm going to have a young man named Matt stand up in the back. Matt is helping me out. He's going to help him to train to be a webmaster with me. And he is super. He's also real strong and help a lot with the chairs. <laughs> All right. Um, in addition to that, though, that's the website. But I sent out an email. The emails that I send out, I have to send them out through a thing called MailChimp. And that's how you get the emails. But within the emails is a, is a lot of links. But in particular, there's the link for the newsletter. So I've had people say, well, isn't your email the newsletter? No, the email is just a lot of information I want to send. But the newsletter actually has other stuff. So just know that there's always a distinction. The newsletter is embedded in the email as a link. So I just wanted to be sure and let you know. Okay. Also, in the last email that I sent out, there's four surveys that we have been asked on a national level to participate. Yeah, I mean, I'm, they're sending stuff to me. One of them, though, is a PhD student that found us, and she said uh, that she had learned that GAPS has a very good response on some of the surveys, and would they please answer this? It's like 10 to 15 minute question. One is Parkinson Movement Disorder Alliance. That's the number two, the support group survey. That's where they're asking you questions about what I'm doing to make sure that they can help me to help be better for you. But more important, and I'll make the announcement here. I started it. I announced it briefly last month. It's going to be a formal announcement in April for Parkinson Awareness Month. But PMDA, which is Parkinson Movement Disorder Alliance, is coming to Austin for their national conference. Uh, they only have it every other year. Last year or the two years ago, it was in Washington, D.C., but this year it's in Austin, and GAPS has been selected to uh, help in all the planning. So I, so if you get a chance to do the survey, your comments will actually come up. But there's a lot of stuff going on, and I'm expanding the – it's not just going to be a GAPS thing. I'm going to get CAPS involved. I'm also going to get Bell County involved. And at this point, I'd like to recognize somebody from Bell County. Uh, Gail, if you'll stand up real quick. This is Gail, Gail Shul, and Gail came as just a wonderful caregiver to GAPS meetings, and she happens to live in Belton, and I started getting a lot of calls from people that said, oh, we need a support group in Belton, and I said, I think I know a great person, and I called her up, and she has gotten a group together, it's a wonderful group, and I want to thank you, Gail, for all you do. Yeah. 
So that's the survey for the support group and an Abby survey that I told you about already. 75 bucks. It's worth it. And then PD Adventures is doing a survey on sleep. So check that email if you'd like to participate in any of these um, surveys. Our GAPS mantra, as you know, is educate, 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 exercise, 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 and socialize, 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 which is why we socialize right here. But we've got a lot of socials coming up, too, that I'll share about. And, of course, this is an education now, and, of course, we'll be exercising. Somebody had told me I ought to change it to C, make socialize first, and that'd be great, except I've got it too many things already, publications, so it's a little hard to change it in the middle of the road. But that, that would have been a good idea for sure. Uh, but we've got a free new class coming up. This Friday is the launch for a new class on brain games. This one is to just help a lot with stimulating the brain. And it's going to be uh, games, puzzles, fun things. It's guaranteed to be just a fun event. And it's going to be 11 a.m. to 12 noon. And it's going to be at the Oaks. The Oaks is... If you're driving on Williams Drive, it's um, if you're going to 35, it's on the right-hand side of the road. If you're coming to Sun City from 35, it's on the left-hand side of the road, beside the point. I got the address in here. Um, let's see, 3720 Williams Drive. It's right off of Williams Drive. And it's at the Oaks Gracious Living, um, yeah, Retirement Living, Gracious Retirement Living facility. And it's very nice. And I heard, and I have put in a number just to give them a rough estimate of 20 people, but we may get a free lunch out of this deal. So if you would like to come, there's no sign up at this point in time. We might be doing sign up for later on, but for right now, there's no sign up and I hope you can join me. It'll be fun. And um, so it, uh, just check it out. And, and by the way, Dave, you're going to this too. <laughs> Dave, my husband, I signed you up already. No. <laughs> so, all right. Speaking of fun and free is all of our exercise classes. So we've got lots of exercise classes, lots of opportunities from vocal exercise, the power for Parkinson's, Sun City Fitness, the new brain games, painting with Parkinson's. By the way, next month we're painting birdhouses. So if you think you would like to do that and you get to take the birdhouse home, please sign up on Sign Up Genius. You said it in all of my stuff that I sent out to you. And then, of course, we have boxing too. So please, please. But you notice I dropped chair yoga. Our chair yoga instructor has retired. And so at this point in time, I do not have a chair yoga instructor, but I'll be finding it out. Socialization, I talked about that. We're having our very first social that I hope will be a monthly event. We are going to be going to have barbecue from 4.30 to 6.30 or just an opportunity. You don't have to eat that long, but I mean, you know, that's the time frame we're going to be there. Guess what? We're going to HEB. That's my favorite store. How about y'all? But <laughs> so you can go grocery shopping after you've gone to eat. But the point is, I'm looking for places that were easy to get into, a place that will have uh, bever adult beverages if we would like, and food, and plenty of room. So it's really neat. I don't know if you've been to that barbecue place right there uh, at HEB, and it's the one right there by Wolf Ranch, across the street from Wolf Ranch. Anyway, it's going to be there. No program, no fundraising, just a fun time. So keep that in mind. And now I think we're about ready for Miss Jamie, if she would like to come on up. If you notice, I've got the all the speak with intent and then maybe my mo. She just does a fabulous job right there. So, Jamie, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a stop share screen here. Let's right. see. Whoop, whoop. Here. Yep. And I am going to, let's see, come over here. Oh, there we go. Stop share screen. And you can, you actually, you can, can it, you want to come, hey, T -Roll, why don't you come right here? Are you, do you have, you don't have anything on there, do you? Nope. Okay. Yeah. Come on right here. You can be right in front. Okay. And we're, this is another thing we're doing different. We used to have a camera that we would try to get on people, but um, before the Zoom and to see it clear, we're going to be just filming directly from my computer. He's he's recording it back there, but we're filming here. There you can. Okay, they got you. All right. Do you want to have the mic? Okay. Yes. Hey, how you doing? Oh, come on. A little more intent. How you doing? Awesome. Great, great. Okay. I am Janie Bush. I'm a speech pathologist. I work at All Care Therapies of Georgetown just right down the road on Williams Drive. Um, we just moved into a nice big facility, so we got lots of room. 
come on over and see us. We have PTOT and speech there. All right, so what my focus is today, I want to take a little poll. I want to know who has had an individual speech therapy course of action, a program. Who's gone through an individual? You want me to stay right there? No, I won't. Okay. Just yank me over if I start. <laughs> All right. All right. Wait, where's arms? All right. Good. Good. Not many in there. Okay. All righty. One of the important things about an individual program going through either PT, OT, speech, um, it doesn't just stop at one time. You think, well, I've been through one therapy. I I've been through one program. And you think, well, that's enough. Well, your dopamine was the same then as it is after you finished. You always need to keep energizing, keep exercising, just like her mantra is, exercise, exercise, exercise. That has been a proven, proven um, key throughout all of Parkinson's research is that you got to keep moving, right? You got to keep moving. And why do you have to keep moving? Because the dopamine um, is depleted. And you all know that. The dopamine is depleted. And it is affected, it affects mostly your automatic movement. You're walking, you're talking, you're breathing, you're eating, you're swallowing, everything is, those things are automatic. But one of the things we teach in our Speak Out program or our um, physical therapy or occupational therapy is to engage the intentional system. Now, everybody says, well, I don't know how to do that. It Basically, you just think, I'm going to do things with more intent, purposeful, deliberate, um, on purpose, deliberate. Do it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. Move like you mean it. I have one client who who's bringing his cup to his mouth, and, and he's slow to do it. And I said, put that thing down. I said, grab that glass of water and bring it to your mouth with intent. Boom. He gets it right there on purpose. And so when you're working with your voice, which mine, let me, okay, I'm going to hydrate. That's another thing. Everybody take a drink because you're going to be yelling with me. Not yelling, speaking out with me. All right. So I could go on and on with a bunch of lecture, but I'm not going to do that. One of the things, a signature with Parkinson's, let's say, so it affects more men than women. So I'm going to pick on you boys. All right. So you say something to your spouse or your friend or your um, daughter, son, whatever, and you say it, well, how are you doing today? And they go, what? What'd you say? And they said, huh, yes, she, and the other person says, honey, you're mumbling. I'm not mumbling. You're just hard of hearing. Okay. Who's, who's had that experience? Raise your hand. Well, I, I see more hands than I saw for that you've gone through therapy. All right. <laughs> because the, the dopamine is depleted. Okay. The dopamine's your automatic. That's your automatic when you go, how you doing? How you doing? See, I'm from West Kentucky, and we don't move our mouth very much. But you got to move your mouth, okay? So you got to employ that on-purpose system. And we're going to go through some exercises. In Speak Out, I'm Speak Out trained. In fact, I'm going through um, a recertification, a refresher of it right now. And our vocal class that we had on Monday got the brunt of it. Sorry, guys, who all, who all attended. Um, was emphasizing the importance of on purpose, moving your mouth, get going. So we have six exercises that we go through, and we're going to start out with that. So we're going to start out with a very simple, very easy, you saw it up there, may, me, my, mo, moo. Now, we're not going to go may, me, my, mo, moo. I mean, we're not going to go may. Me, oh, you heard that West Kentucky, didn't you? My, all right. You're going to lift it up. 
All right, I'm standing here and I'm gonna lift my voice up way over there. And so I want you all, when you do it back to me, you're gonna lift your voice over that screen. Everybody visualize it. All right, think about, are we in March Madness, right? You got all those three pointers. Man, that guy from Oakland hit 10 threes against Kentucky. Oh my gosh, all right? So he went, he went, man. hey, let me hear one. Man. Right. Now we're going to keep it connected. Ready? Man. My. 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 Now that's different than going, may, me, my, because we're engaging the voice. We're getting it up and out. We're taking it from here and we're putting it over there. So let me hear you, all right? I'm very simple, very simple. You're engaging the respiration, the phonation, the mouth. You're getting the mouth going. You're not going, my, me, my. That doesn't do it. You hear how my weak my voice is when I don't have good breath support underneath? You got to get that breath support underneath. Ready? Here we go. One more round of it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not blowing y'all out. Sorry about that. Good. All right. I'm going to take a drink. All right. Anybody got a drink? Drink with intent. <laughs> No joking. <clears throat> all right. The second exercise is a sustained awe. All right. I want you to think of a long ball tennis. Who's played tennis? Come on, with intent. Who's played tennis? All right, good. And I loved to hit, be way back here and hit my long ball all the way to their baseline, right? May have to scramble back and get it. So we're going to do that. We're going to go, ah, uh, sorry about that. <clears throat> all right. Well, Get a good breath there. All right. We're going to bounce that ball all the way over there. Ready? Good, good. And I love that. I saw some of you using your arms also, because a lot of times that just helps you throw out the idea. Whew, I'm talking too fast, so I'm losing my air. All right, we're going to do two more. Are you ready? We're going to throw it all the way to the back wall. Let's go. Um. Good, 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 good. Now, the goal, your goal would be 10 seconds work, okay? If you can't get that, it's okay. If you get two seconds of good, strong voice, that's the key. Uh, okay, it's okay, all right? The third exercise in the list of six, the third exercise is glide, Okay, now a lot of you, who's going to say, why ain't a singer? Who's going to say that? <laughs> Who likes to sing? Oh, come on, we all do shower singing. Come on. All right. <laughs> all right. So this, the glide is not about singing, okay? It's about getting the voice up and out. All right. So we're going to start here. Um... Oh. All right, everybody good? You get the idea? We're not going up to the stratospheres. All right, here we go again. Um, one. You notice my mouth is open. I look around here, and I see somebody going, oh, all right. Mouth open allows the full vocal tract to be available for that sound to travel on. All right? 
One more. I always run over, so I, we're going to go faster. All right. All that feel good? You got it. I, I hear a lot of intent out there. All right, so that was our glide. The next one we go to is counting, okay? This is one, two, three. This is this is running, running a little bit faster, okay? One, two, three. I lied. I thought I saw the sign from Mary Jane go, come on, go faster. So I said faster. No, it's intent. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Notice I'm trailing together. Seven, eight, nine. Who's using intent? Y'all using intent? Eleven. Oh, no, wait a minute. Lord to me. Ten, eleven, twelve. Get the idea? Okay. That's exercise number four. Uh, five is reading. Now, I'm not going to have you, I don't have anything up on the screen to read, so I'm just going to have you repeat some things. It wants to see my face. All right. Okay. Say these phrases after me. Say, open the door. Open the door. Come in, please. <laughs> Strong, guys. Great. All right. Honey, I'm home. I'm back. You're kidding. You're kidding. All right. Now, you see I'm using a lot of animation. Parkinson's takes away your animation. Will you put it back intentionally? You're kidding. Good job. The final exercise we do is a cognitive exercise. I'm going to say part of a sentence. And you're going to scream out the answer. Are you ready? Open the... But not scream. You're going to project the answer. Whoop, I got... I've been, been fussed at. Up and... Good. Oh, that was lousy. Come on, guys. Up and... Good. Peanut butter. My husband would say olives. He puts olives in his peanut butter. Anyway. All right, let's go to ball game. Ah, oh, good. All right, with intent, sir, go. Ball game. Good. Let's go to I can't hear you. Let's go to All right, last one. Hot and cold. Good, very good. All right, now that was quick six exercises. Our therapy usually lasts about 45 to uh, 60 minutes. Oh, doing these things. I want to thank Janie very, very much. And if you would like to do these every Monday, on the second and fourth Monday, we meet. And Janie leads all those exercises right here at this Baptist Church in the Education Building. 108. 108. There you go. And that is going to be at uh, 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock on the 2nd and 4th Monday. On the 1st, 3rd, and 5th Monday, we sing. And I have two professional singers and a piano player. So it's a lot of fun. So just know that it's totally free and available for you to exercise your voice. All right. Now, with that, let me get my um, trusty mouse here. And there we go. Okay. And I'm going to do this loading panel. Come on now. All right. What we have now is our speaker, and that's who a lot of y'all came to see and hear. We are very, very fortunate to have uh, Dr. Patricia Sulak, also known as just Patsy. She is a physician, a medical school professor, a national speaker, uh, co-founder of Living Well Aware, which, by the way, they have a table right up here, and they will still be here after the meeting. I want you to be sure and check out some of her books. But uh, as you notice, she's also a pharmacist. 
So she was a pharmacist, then went back into medical school. That's impressive. Oh my golly, that's very impressive. I am looking forward to seeing her presentation. Uh, she was highly recommended by Gail because she already spoke at Bell County. And uh, I've already even had other folks say how fabulous you were. So we are very fortunate here at GAPS to get her. And I want to say, please come on up and thank you so much. And then this will give you an idea how you can be seen. Drum roll. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Yes, is that okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, it's a pleasure being here and uh, speech therapy. I had to go through speech therapy because years ago I was kind of losing my voice and um, uh, things were happening and then my voice was deepening and I thought, what is going on? And I went to go see the ENT doc and he goes, you have vocal cord nodules. And, and I said, why do I have those? He goes, because you... You're a speaker. You talk a lot, but you're not speaking correctly. Uh -huh. So I went home and I, you know, I told my husband and my son, one of my sons was there at the time. And I went, I have vocal cord nodules, you know, because I guess I talk too much. And my son said, you had to have a doctor tell you that. They tell you that. Mm -hmm. See, where's the slide changer? Here it is right here. I think we got it here. So it, maybe this is going to work. Maybe it's not. There we go. All right. Well, thank you, Mary Jane, for the uh, introduction there. I am co-founder of Living Well Aware, along with my, uh, I'm going to make sure I get in the picture here. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Living Well Aware, along with my husband, uh, Jeff Waxman, and we have programs for adults and now also for uh, adolescents, because we want kids to be learning what I'm going to be talking to you about. And I'm author of a book, Should I Fire My Doctor? But it's not about firing your doctor. It's about hiring yourself. You can do much more for your wellness than your doctor will ever be able to do because we don't have time. We don't have time. Your wellness is up to you. And when you have an illness, that's where we come in, okay? Uh, and um, author of a workbook to go along with it. I owe all this to my husband. I never had any intention of writing a book. I like writing articles. I have over a hundred articles in the medical school literature dealing with, uh, with women's health and internationally known for a, a lot of the stuff that I've done. But as I'll talk about, I kind of got dragged into wellness uh, and a 52 week wellness planner. And uh, I'm a professor and a researcher and a speaker. And I'm also a, a veteran and I'm a practicing gynecologist at Baylor Scott and White. My husband can't be here because he's in the operating room. Fortunately, he's not the patient. <laughs> um, he operates uh, at the Children's Hospital in Temple uh, two or three days a week. And a lot of times when we put on wellness conferences, he's able to join me. He's actually the mastermind behind Living Well Aware. Uh, and because he talked us into getting involved in this. Uh, and he is a practicing urologist at Scott and White, but he's now uh, primarily operating on babies and little children. So do you want to talk about today is healthy aging. How can we age healthy here? Okay. Let's see if I can get it to go here. And actually, what does it cost? What does it cost to be healthy? Right? What does it cost to be healthy? Uh, and why is that so important today? Well, it's important today because life expectancy is decreasing. That's crazy. We live in America. We have all these amazing medications, surgical procedures, robotics, incredible targeted therapies for cancer, and life expectancy is decreasing. Right. Now, you might say, well, yeah, it's because of COVID. Yes, COVID caused a plummet, but even before COVID, in 20, the years before that, life expectancy had plateaued, then it plummeted. Now that COVID, the pandemic's over, we're still seeing more deaths from heart disease. Liver disease has cropped into the top 10. Why? Because of, because of toxins we're putting in our body and because of fatty liver. Fatty liver is overtaking alcoholic liver, although alcoholic disease is increasing now because of increased consumption and because of these drug overdoses that we're seeing. So we're seeing life expectancy go down. And it's not just in adults. This is startling, and this is why I'm passionate about adolescent wellness, and I have an adolescent wellness in schools, which is 
spreading across the state, I'm uh, happy to say, because it's so important now. Deaths are increasing in our children. In fact, the death rates in our children age nine, 1 to 19 increased 19% over a two-year span, 2019 to 2020. Wow. Folks, if the death rate in our children increases 1%, that's too high. 19%. Now, why are death rates going up in kids? It's not diabetes. It's not cancer. What is it? Drugs. Accidents, murder, and suicide. That's 70% of the deaths in our children. Diseases of society, right? So and it's not so deaths are, you know, life expectancy is going down. But not only is life expectancy going down, our health span is decreasing. What is health span? Health span is the number of years that you and I are vibrant, that we can take care of ourselves. We're actually in, really enjoying life. We're able to do what we want to. Health span is going down. Health span is going down. What is going on? We live in one of those the most amazing countries in the world, and we're seeing all of this happen, okay? And a lot of it is because what you and I are being exposed to, which is what I'll talk about. So what does it cost to be healthy? You might say, well, Patsy, it costs money. No. Staying healthy doesn't cost that much money. It doesn't cost anything to go for a walk. Okay? What are free programs and gym memberships? Planet Fitness, 10 bucks a month. No. What co what's costly? Illness. When, we, when we're not maximizing taking care of ourselves. Right? So staying healthy is, is it, it, that's, that doesn't, doesn't involve that much money. Now, it does for me because I go out and, and, and learn about all the latest in wellness, and then I give it to you at a low cost, okay? <laughs> all right, so me, I spend a lot of money on wellness just because it's what I do. I want to know what the best is out there, right? What is the best out there? But you might say, okay, Patsy, it doesn't cost money. It costs time. It costs time. Yeah, it costs a little bit of time. You've got to get out there and exercise every day and go to the grocery store and get the healthy food and stuff. But actually, being unhealthy is what costs us time, isn't it? It costs us a lot of time going to all those appointments and everything else that we have to do. And it takes time off our lifespan. So it's actually, it's unhealthiness. It's, it's being unhealthy that's costly in time and money. So if it's not time and money, what... What does it cost to be healthy? I'd like to answer that question by first asking you a question. Have you ever been pressured to go somewhere you didn't want to go? Absolutely. Raise your hand. If you didn't raise your hand, you lie about other shit too, don't you? <laughs> we all, we've all been there. And for me, it was April 2008. April 2008. I, it was earlier, actually earlier that year, I'd just come home from one of my inter international speaking trips because I came up with this innovative way to get rid of women's menstrual disorders, how to get rid of their menstrual migraine headaches and their PMS and their cramps and their bleeding. And I came up with this research and it, it was effective. So I'm asked to speak all over the world. So I came back from one of these speaking engagements, come home and my husband announces, I've signed us up for a wellness conference. And I went, you did what? He said, yeah, it's going to be in April. It's four days. I checked your schedule. You have no speaking engagements that weekend, and you can block those other two days off, and we're going to go to this wellness conference. Four days. And I went, uh, why do we need to go to a wellness conference? He goes, because we're not well. And I couldn't argue with him. I mean, even though life should have been, you know, life was great for me. I was internationally known. I was traveling the world. My kids were doing great. One's in grad school, the, the other's in college. Things are great. Things should have been great. They weren't. I was stressed out all the time, not taking care of myself, actually drinking too much. And I won't go into a lot of other things. And my marriage was not doing So he goes, we need to do this. And I went, 
Well, look, it's expensive. I'm getting the hospital to pay for it. What? Self-development. I'm thinking, I'm not going to get out of this. I went, fine, I'll go. I'm sure I'll learn something. So I went. A few hours into this four-day conference, I'm going, oh, my goodness. I'm learning things about proper nutrition, how, how the body works, the microbiome. I'm learning about the importance of emotional health, how the brain functions. I'm learning about spiritual health. I'm learning about meditation. So I didn't learn in high school or college or medical school or residency or any of the medical programs I was attending every year. And so I always say, we drank the cool. Actually, we stopped drinking Kool-Aid after that. <laughs> and it really took us down a path of, of that's that's just been life changing personally and professionally. We started, we came immediately back and started saying, okay, we can start applying some of these things, and we jumped right into it. I uh, just started changing the way we eat. We thought we were eating healthy. No, we weren't. Our sleep patterns were horrible. We were doctors, and we got we got to we got to figure this out. We started slowly making changes, and then as I was speaking around the country, I was asked to speak at medical meetings. I said, hey, I'm doing some stuff with wellness. I'd like to speak on it. And then all of a sudden, I was asked to speak more on wellness than I was women's hormonal issues. Although I still do like treating menopausal patients, okay? I, I really like taking, dealing with that. I still do it a little bit and still speak on it. But I started speaking on it. And so it really has continued. We've continued this journey. And through this journey, we developed Living Well Aware. So we started the journey in 2008, started attending more conferences, reading more books, looking at the data, because I'm a medical school professor, I'm a researcher, I'm, I'm, I'm an educator. I want to see the data. You know, what is the data? What's the scientific data on really what works and what should we consider? All right. What's fact and what's fiction and what's downright fraud? And as we started applying all this, we started seeing the successes in our own life. I can tell you at the time when we started, started doing this, I was about 55 years old. I'm 71 years old now. I feel a heck of a lot better at 71 than I did at 31. I started taking care of myself and looking at literally how does my body work and looking at all aspects of wellness, just not my physical health, my emotional health. I wanted to re remove the word stress from my vocabulary because I realized I had created it. It's not what's happening out there. It's my reaction to what's happening out there. Physical, social, my social well-being, the quality of my relationships. Folks, I didn't know married people were supposed to be this happy. <laughs> I totally turned my marriage around. It used to be my husband just... Couldn't do anything right. I could find something wrong. That's what obsessive compulsive people do, okay? And now there's nothing he can do to upset me. But I tell him not to push it, okay? <laughs> we started applying this physically, emotionally, financially, I had plenty of money. We're both doctors. What are we doing with those gifts? Yeah. And realizing money does not buy happiness. Now, and I left a very lucrative world, I can tell you that. I was being paid mega thousands of dollars to travel and do this stuff. I left it. I'm like, this is not where my happiness is. I had to change it how I, how I look at things and truly where is happiness. And I realized it was in me trying to use my gift as a doctor and everything else to help others. So we saw these successes. And I also took my spiritual health to a higher level. I truly believe I'm a spiritual being having a temporary human experience. And while I'm here, I would like for that temporary human experience to be wonderful and to, and to know what my mission here is on planet Earth. Okay. So I realized my spiritual, my emotional well-being was, was the foundation for everything else. Because don't you know a lot of people that physically look like a billion bucks? I used to say million, but inflation. No. <laughs> They look like a billion bucks, but emotionally they're a wreck. 
socially, their relationships. We want the whole package, physical, emotional, social, financial, spiritual. And we things are going to happen in our life. And whatever's happening to us physically, emotionally, socially, financially, spiritually, we want to be able to take that on. Because things are going to happen to us with our health and everything else and, and relationships and stuff. And how can we best deal with that? So we had a lot of successes. So we were putting on programs. In fact, you know, you went through my 2023 program, all 25 webinars. Uh, she went through the 25, we did 25 webinars last year, and we're we're about to start up 2024. I took some time off, okay? So we're about to start up Living Well Aware 2024. So we saw a lot of successes, people emailing us how they're off their medications, and, and now the 88-year-old who goes to the gym every day, I've become a gym rat. What? She'd never exercised before. And so we saw the successes, but we also saw the struggles, the struggles. People, I love it when people email me and they tell me their struggles. I want, I want those people that, yeah, I love hearing your successes, but I really want to know what you're struggling with. Now, I, I want to hear from those people. And, and the people knew that they could email me and they would tell me their struggles. And so, you know, they would have difficulty losing weight or maybe exercising or, or dealing with their stress and their depression. So it made me want to answer what is often keeping us from an optimal state of health. Well, sometimes when I struggle in like developing my meditation program or, or, or whatever, I, I would even struggle in making some of these changes. So I wanted to answer the question, what does it cost for us to be healthy? If it's not time, it's not money, what is it? It's actually our BS. It's our belief system. Our belief system. Actually, it's our self-limiting belief system. We have these self-limiting beliefs that keep us from things. We've told we how often have we told ourselves it's difficult to lose weight? I can't change my eating. That's just not the way I was brought up. I'm 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 a stressed out person, shouldn't I be? With what's going on in my life? All of these self-limiting beliefs, commonly known as Excuses, but I like to think of them as just self-limiting beliefs. And here I realized at age 55, I was going to this wellness conference and I had all these self-limiting beliefs. I'm thinking, well, I'm 55. I, I need to be slowing down, shouldn't I? Maybe I should start thinking about retirement. And my patients had self-limiting beliefs. Dr. Schulark, I've tried everything. I can't lose weight. And I looked at him and I go, well, of course you can't. And they look at me and I go, you just told me you couldn't. It would be impossible for you to lose weight. You are your beliefs. The mind is the master. The body is the slave. If you say something's impossible, it's going to be impossible. If you say it's going to be difficult, your body will find a way to make it difficult. It's just like people label themselves, I'm depressed. Well, of course you are. You just label yourself depressed. And guess what? Your body's going to know how to do depression. I may have, something may happen in my life and I may have some depressive thoughts. I'm not going to label myself depression. Are you catching what I'm throwing here? We need to be very careful what we tell ourselves because it'll be a self-fulfilling prophecy. A self-fulfilling prophecy. Self-limiting beliefs lead to a self-limiting self-image. How we see ourselves is how we act, how we feel, how we see ourselves. And some of my friends see themselves, I've been overweight all my life. And they're going to make sure they're going to be overweight all their life. It's how they see themselves. I have a friend of mine Lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight. She goes, Patsy, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I go, tell me what the best you looks like. And she said, I don't, I don't have a clue. She had all these self-limiting beliefs that it's difficult, it's difficult, it's just the way I am. So that's what we do. So how we see ourselves, our self-images, 
controls our life, guides our minds, commands, center, directs all of our actions and feelings, and it is impossible for you and I to act otherwise. So particularly in whether life's going great or we're dealing with some difficult challenges, we have to be very careful about what we're saying because if we're saying negative things, it's only going to make things worse. So where did we get this self-limiting BS belief system? The self-limiting self-image. I'm going to try to stay over here. I'm sorry. But, but keep, thanks for reminding me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Keep me on track here, okay? So where did we get this self-limiting BS? We got it from two things. You are where you are right now. We all are. We're right here where we are right now. We're in the physical state we're in, the emotional state we're in, the social state we're in, the financial state we're in, the spiritual state we're in because of two things. Number one is everything you and I have been exposed to. And when you know when you've lived as many decades as a lot of us have in this room, we've been exposed to a lot, haven't we? Right? We've been exposed to beliefs, philosophies, uh, we've been exposed to chemicals and everything else, everything, all these things we've been exposed to. Now, a lot of this has been great. We learned we learned growing up from the moment we were born. We learned how to walk, talk, eat, do all these things. So all these things are, are great. But we've also been exposed to some negative things. Some negative things have happened to us. And we've been exposed to some things that are doing some things to our body that we didn't realize that was harmful, maybe at the time, or we're trying to figure out what was it. And we're working on that. The second thing that's influenced where we are right now is our genetics. Our genetics. Two people can have the same environment, but one develops a problem and the other doesn't because they have a genetic predisposition towards that. And we're just now understanding all the genetic genetics. Some people have genetic tendencies toward, towards neurologic disorders, towards high blood pressure. How many of you inherited a high blood pressure gene from one of your parents? Yeah or maybe a cholesterol problem or a tendency towards diabetes. Some, a small percentage of people inherit tendencies towards cancers. They get the breast cancer gene. But do all women with the breast cancer gene develop breast cancer? No. Why do some people, yes, some people know. That's where the environment comes in. We, we can alter the function of genes. Okay? So we are where we are right now because of Everything that's happened to us in the past, in fact, all of our exposures and our genetics, even our personality, we inherit that. I'm the middle of seven kids, born in a ranch, born on a farm and a ranch below Fort Worth. If anybody knows where Itasca is, all right, yes. to parents who didn't make it past the sixth grade. Seven of us kids were all different. My brothers and sisters are amazing. I love all of them. They're amazing people. I always say, I'm the crazy one. <laughs> Born with an obsessive compulsive personality, which, which can drive people crazy. Right? You can accomplish a lot with an obsessive, that obsessive compulsive personality, but also it, it can create problems. It was creating problems in marriage. So a lot of this, so, so what can we do? Can we, can we change our past? Can we change our genetics? We can change both of them. We can, we can start altering some of those past things that we're doing to try to eliminate these things, but we can also alter how we look at things, how we look at things. Sometimes we're having negative feelings about something that happened. We can change our feeling about that. I can, that is, I had held it against my parents for a long time because I was, I was graduating from high school and I wanted to go to college. And my dad said, women don't need to go to college. <laughs> and I held it against my dad while I went on to college. In fact, not only did I go on to college, but I went on to medical school. And one reason, because there's a, I don't know if Jan's still here. Is she in here? She may have had to leave. She came here for a little while. Someone encouraged me to go to medical school because I ran out of money and this family took me in and had, had my parents not said that, not, they, had maybe they funded my college, I wouldn't have met this other couple that talked me into going to medical school. Maybe that wouldn't have happened. So I had to look back at all that and realize my father had a right to his opinion. He didn't have an education. He was doing well. 
his life circumstances, his genetics said, women don't need to go to college. And I had to look back at that and go, he had a right to his opinion. I just needed to get a life and figure it out. We can look, how to look for the gifts and opportunities in those events that have happened that we struggle with, that we struggle with. And I look back at every negative event that's ever happened in my life, and I looked for the good, the gift, and the opportunity with it, and I dumped 100% of grievances. Amazing how much happier your life is. And there are, there are people who've had nothing short of atrocities committed to them, who've, who've gotten over it, and now are New York Times best-selling authors on happiness. They're not going to let that one event destroy them. They're going to try to understand where was that person coming from? What were they dealing with? So this is something that we can all do. So remember this. We are where we are right now because of our life events and our genetics. Now, we may not like where we are, but that's what living well aware is all about. We've got to look at what we can do. And remember, sometimes it's not our fault. It's just our programming. We're being programmed not lead a healthy lifestyle. You know, we're being programmed maybe to be sedentary or maybe eat some foods that aren't good for us or maybe get stressed out when stress is not good for anything, particularly if you have a neurologic disorder. We want to, the more we can figure out how to deal with that, the better off we're going to be, the better off we're going to be. Because the truth is, you and I walk around all day long and we're being we're programmed. 90% of the stuff we do every day is the same stuff. We have the same thoughts. We do the same things. We get up in the morning and y'all all do the same thing, don't you? And you know what it is that you do, whatever it is. Some of you head, you head straight to the bathroom. Some of you straight to the kitchen to get the coffee, whatever. But we're programmed. We're programmed. And that's good. We want to be programmed because I want most of the standard stuff to be programmed so I can learn new things. I don't want to get up in the morning and go, how do I walk? What, how do I talk? What? And, you know, I want those programs to be working, and I want to try to figure out ways to keep programs working. Those programs that aren't working for me, I want to do something with those. In fact, I love Anthony DeMello. He said, we think we're free, but there probably isn't a gesture, a thought, an emotion, an attitude, a belief in you that isn't coming from someone else, and you don't even know it. Our belief system has been programmed up here, and it's it's in a, it's in a group of cells. And so... Since we're in a church, I can say this. Thessalonians, question everything. Retain what is good. Retain what is good. The problem is you and I are being programmed for unhealthiness. My husband and I, we were programmed for unhealthiness. Uh, we were, I think we were doing a great job of taking care of patients, but we were not doing a good job of taking care of ourselves our physical, emotional, social, financial, and spiritual health, because all of us can buy into a lot of bad things today. And I don't have time to go over this, but in fact, the, the toughest part for me is to, in 30 minutes, tell you what I, what I usually take four to six hours to talk about. So we're going hit, to hit some of the high points today. So what's the answer? We need an upgrade up here. Our brain functions like literally a GPS system. Or what I like to call our global performance system. It functions like a GPS system. It's pretty amazing. We're all familiar now with AI, right? Artificial intelligence. What are these guys trying to do? Replicate what this does. All right? But our brain is like a GPS system. I mean, how did I get here to the church here from Temple, Texas, 3202 Stratford Drive to here? What did I do? And my car's not connected to my car. All right? And gave me the route to get here. In fact, it gave me a couple of routes. It needed to know, Patsy, where are you now? And where do you want to go? And we'll get you there. And if there would have been an accident or what, it would. Not help me. Your brain does the same thing. Your GPS system up here is taking you places every day. It's taking you maybe to that favorite fast food restaurant or that favorite coffee place or to do this or to do that. Your GPS is programmed up here. It's programmed. It's programmed. All right? 
The question is, is it programmed for healthy versus unhealthy emotions and behaviors? Even your emotions are programmed up here. You know they are. You know what makes you happy, don't you? If this happens, you're going to be happy. You know what stresses you out. It's been programmed up here. You know maybe what even makes you angry or frustrated. It's been programmed up here. Same thing, one person may just be angry and that person is like, oh, I can't believe that person did that. Hmm. Programming. So those things that we're doing that are healthy, you know, we're, we're, we're exercising every day, we're eating healthy, we're meditating, we're taking care of ourselves, we want to keep those programs. In fact, we want to upgrade them. Do you upgrade your phones? Do y'all all have a cell phone? Can we function without them? Seriously. Is it your first cell phone? I think I'm on the iPhone 12 or 13. And my husband says, oh, I need the whatever it is. And I went, no, this one's working just fine. I don't need to upgrade my cell phone. Here, here's what I need to upgrade. The most amazing computer in the world. This is the program I am upgrading. This is what Living Well Aware is all about. How do I delete bad programs, take the good programs, make them even better? But as I'll talk about, and use programs that I haven't been using. Okay. So how do we dump the self-limiting belief system and create an improved self-image? Once again, that's what Living Well Aware is all about. The truth is we have an epidemic of self-induced disease. I mean, and it doesn't matter how old we are. It doesn't matter how much money we have, what race we are. We're all at risk because we're all plugged in. We're all at risk. They know how to program us. They have, they have degrees in this, okay? So what's the number one cause of death and disability in America? Any guesses? So shout out something. Heart disease. Anything else? Cancer. Unhealthy behaviors. That's the number one cause of death and disability in America. Talk to any cardiologist. The majority of heart attacks totally preventable. Talk to any neurologist. The majority of strokes, Alzheimer's disease, totally preventable. Not with medications, with our lifestyle. All right. So what's the number one self-induced disease caused by unhealthy behaviors? Heart attacks, any other guesses? Diabetes? Aging is a disease. And you might say, no, aging is not a disease. It's programmed into the DNA. No, it's not. Aging is a disease, and this is coming out of Harvard, uh, Harvard Research Labs, USC Longevity Clinic, Cleveland Clinic. All these guys are looking at aging as a disease caused by what? DNA damage from all the stuff you and I are exposing our stuff through, to over decades and decades and decades. That DNA d damage leads to altered protein production, leads to inflammation, leads to... Disease, that disease may be a heart attack in one person, a stroke in another person, diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. Aging is a disease. It's a disease absolutely phenomenal. The best, one of the best books that came out came out during the pandemic by Dr. David Sinclair out of Harvard. And the title is Lifespan, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have to. Now, I think that's a pretty dramatic title. I think in reality, I would say why we age and how we can slow it down. I truly believe that. I've, 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 I'm seeing it in my own life. We can slow it down but dramatically. And that's what's happening, folks. So Living Well Aware focuses on happen, what's happening upstream that's causing all the problems downstream. In medicine, we deal with downstream. You come in with the problem, and now we, we got to do whatever we can. 
But we don't work on this a lot of times the same, all the stuff that we can do ha that's happening upstream that first of all caused it. And if we work on this upstream problem, we might be able to actually, you know, help maybe just as much as the medicines, if not more in some cases. So what can we do? We can make, first of all, personal health the priority. The priority. Doesn't does that make sense? But what happens? People make money the priority or the house or having a better car and all this other stuff. Making our, our health the personal priority. And by the way, priority was singular until about the 1400s when it became pluralized, priorities. I'm saying we make health the priority. And that's not a selfish thing. When we do that, I can tell you for me and my husband, when we made our personal health the priority, now we're more productive, more creative, helping more people. So it's not a selfish thing. It's what we're called to do. In fact, even Jesus took 40 days off to get his act together. Pretty incredible. All right. All right. So how do we make personal health a priority? We need a new program. I need a new operating system up here. I keep upgrading my phones and my computers, and here's why I need a new operating system. So it's what we call the living well aware eyes to a new improved eye. And it's living well aware is all about this formula. I meaning first eye information. What's the best information? Because is there a lot of crazy information out there? Yes, people are trying to tell sell you a lot of stuff. I don't have any vitamins, minerals, herbs, or supplements to sell you folks. And I refuse to endorse any of it. People have asked me to because they know what I'm doing. Hey, endorse our product. No, I'm not going to do that. I may use your product, but I'm not going to endorse it. Okay? Because I don't want people to think, oh, we're just, you know, I want you to use this because I'm endorsing it. No. We want to give you the best information. Then we want to give you implementation strategies. How do you... Here's healthy eating. How do you do this? I have about 200 pictures of actually my place on what I eat, how I do this. Implementation. And then the third eye, inspiration. We want you to know that you can do this. You, if we can do this with our schedules and everything, you can do this. Right? We can all do something to make a situation better. Information, implementation, and inspiration. Guess what that leads to? Installation. All of a sudden, you're doing it automatically. You don't even have to think about it. You're doing it automatically. You're doing it just like brushing your teeth. You just you just do it. You do it automatically. Now you have installed a new program that's running subconsciously. I get up every morning and I exercise. I don't willpower. Oh hell no! If we were up to willpower, I'd still be in bed right now. <laughs> no, I have a program up here. And that program is getting me to a destination because I know I can see where I want to be. I see myself. I see myself in my 90s and my 100s. I'm on an international flight. Putting my suitcase in the overhead bed. We have to visualize. You've got to come up with your own visions. I su suggest to you, you dream big. Even when we have health problems, dream big. Dream as big as you can. Right. Now, what drives this equation? Information plus implementation plus inspiration equal installation. What drives the equation? I'm, 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 I was a pharmacist and medicine. I love equations. <laughs> what drives the equation? The most important I, imagination. You and I have to see ourselves differently. I had to see myself getting younger. I had to see myself calm. <laughs> Even when all hell is breaking loose in labor and delivery. I had to see myself as having the best marriage ever. And my husband, not what my husband needed to do, what I needed to do. I had to see myself with my, my financial blessings and how can I help people spiritually. I had, to, I had to see myself as someone who's here to make this place a better world. And for me personally, I'm not here to evangelize leading a, a life of Jesus Christ. So I had I have to imagine myself. In fact, Albert Einstein said, when I examine myself in my methods of thought, I come to the conclusion that the gift of fantasy 
has meant more to me than my talent for absorbing positive knowledge. Albert Einstein realized his gift of fantasy for him to see things differently. And look what he was able to do. That's what you and I do. We need to be doing using all of our brain, which I'll talk about. So over the years, starting in 2008, my husband and I started making a list. What are the things that if we did this, it would improve some aspect of our life? And we kept making the list. And over, over the years, we came up with 11 essential elements that lead to health and happiness. And when we got to 11, we couldn't think of any more. So that's when I wrote the book. Okay, one short chapter on each of the 11 essential elements. It's a quick read. The workbook goes into more detail, all right? And the journal just helps you follow. So these are the living 11 essential elements of health and happiness. I don't have time to talk about them now, but I do conferences on this. Normal numbers now, get our numbers in a normal range. Critique caloric consumption. We need to be eating real food. We totally changed our eating. I learned how to cook. It's amazing. And you will not see me at a fast food restaurant, right? Make movement mandatory. Halt harmful habits. Manage money in minutes. Graciously give your gifts. Forgive. People can look like a billion bucks, have all the money in the world, and anger is destroying their life. You know any of these people? We decided we were going to dump all grievances. Not for them, for us. Forgiveness is the greatest gift you give yourself. It has nothing to do with the other person. By the way, anytime we have a negative thought, what are we doing? We are attacking ourselves. I decided I wanted to quit attacking myself. I, I just gave a 30-minute webinar for a large group out of New Orleans yesterday on, the, on this very topic. All right. Constantly pursue purpose and priorities. Get rid of the negative emotion, stress. Periodically pause, ponder, plan. For a lot of people, maybe pray. For me, it's reflection, prayer, and meditation every day. I do it every day. And seek and secure support who's on your team. I find amazing people that will help me physically, emotionally, socially, financially, spiritually. And I stalk them. <laughs> I want them on my team. So that's the focus of my book, One Short Chapter, and the workbook. And for people who love to journal, there's a 52-week journal that goes along, along with it. People who write down their goals and plans and track them are about 90% more likely to actually do it. Something about monitoring. What gets monitored gets managed, okay? So, and now adolescents are learning this. How would you like to have learned all this when you were like in the sixth, seventh, eighth grade? Now we have a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade program. And by the way, our schools that are using our program, every lesson for the kids comes with a brief video for the parents. There's no, nothing else like it. I'm so excited. It's the project of my lifetime. Uh, and we we finished it uh, last year and schools are taking it on. So we did a great training system. Okay? Because our belief system, our BS, our thoughts create our reality. I create the world I live in. And if you and I have if we're frustrated about something, if we're worried about something, or we're, we're, we're angry, or just irritated, you know, what, what's happening when we have the, these negative feelings, okay? You know, what's happening is we're having negative neurochemicals bathe our body. That affects our immune system, our gastrointestinal system, our cardiac system, our nervous system. It affects every system in our body because we're bathing ourselves with these negative, these negative thoughts aren't just thoughts. Those negative thoughts that are created up here spread through the trillions of neuron connections throughout our body. And we're, we're bathing ourselves with this. But when you, you and I do great things, when we're working out every day, we're doing something, whatever we can do. When you and I are volunteering, I love it. Uh, Jimmy Carter, even at the age of like 99 or whatever, he was out there with Habitats for Humanity with a hammer. He kept us and kept him alive. He never, ever quit helping others. I mean, I can only imagine what that was doing to his immune system and all this. I mean, it was, it's just incredible. Now, you and I are eating healthy foods. 
that affects us neurochemically. It's called the, it's called the gut brain connection. There's, there's trillions of connections and neurons in our gut, and ninety percent of our serotonin is made in our gut. It's like who's ruling who. In fact, your microbiome, all those bacteria in your gut, have a hundred times more DNA than all the cells in the rest of your body. That is fact. Wow. What you and I eat is critical. Totally changed my eating. I got dairy out of my diet, and I got most of the gluten out of my diet. I lived with real food, vegetables, and properly sourced meats. All right? And I learned how to cook them. When you and I are hanging around healthy people, positive people, this is so important, which is why it's so great you guys had this support group. I'm loving what y'all are doing here. This is incredible. This is awesome. All right? You know, and when we stop, turn everything off and pay a visit to ourselves. And we're just focusing on what's happening out there most of the time. But when we stop and meditate, I'm not focusing on what's happening out there. I'm focusing on how I'm reacting to what's happening out there. Oh, that made me frustrated. Hmm. Or, oh, I, when that happened, that unexpected, unwanted bit, I found myself anxious. Oh. So meditation is we pay a visit to our thoughts. And my husband leads these because he's so calming. He's so amazing. He took me kicking and screaming into meditation, and now I'm addicted to it. But he's so, I, in fact, next week he's doing the meditation webinar for this large group we're doing, working with in New Orleans because he's so great. In fact, I think there's about 50 women in Temple waiting for me to die. Because they email me. Dr. Waxman. Yeah, I know. But this is so important because when we're doing all these good things, when we're when we're kind, when we're forgiving, when we're helping others, when we're trying to be understanding when people are doing things we wish they wouldn't do, when we're eating healthy and we're, when we're exercising, we're bathing ourselves with amazing, great form these neurochemicals and it's affecting every body system every one of them okay so we are our bs this talk is full of bs isn't it yeah okay? that's how you're going to remember it we are our belief system and our belief system is stored in our brain it's it's in a program up here it's stored up here all right so our brain is unlike any other organ in our body that's duplicated. I mean, you know that you have a right brain and a left brain, right? And they look the same. They look exactly the same, but they have different functions. It's the only organ in the body that's duplicated that has different functions. You have two lungs. Does one inhale and the other exhale? You have two kidneys. Does one do one thing and the other do the other thing? No, you have two arms, they both do the same thing. Two eyes, two. Every organ in the body that's duplicated has the same function except the brain. Except the brain, okay? In fact, we have two brains with two, with, with two different sets of functions, and I might say two different personalities, okay? Our left brain is literally our survival brain. It's what keeps us alive on planet Earth. It's what tells me to slam on the brakes. That there's somebody in the queue it's in the street. You know, it's it, it's my survival brain, and it's all it's 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 what's helped me be famous. It's my G. I call it my GTD. Get things done. I right? it's the me. My left brain is the me. I am Dr. Patsy Shulock. I am also Mrs. Waxman. I am a Christian. I am a grandmother. I am a mother. I am a, I am, I, I, it gives me my, I, my, it's me. All right. And that me is stored in, in cells in my left brain. And if I have a stroke there, me is gone. Isn't that amazing? It's kind of humbling, isn't it? That's my left brain. Now my right brain it's not my surviving, it's my thriving brain. Some people call it the sage, the inner spirit. It's the deeper, wider, wiser side of you and I. It doesn't care about the past. It's, it's, 
present, but it, it compares it to the past and tries to predict the future. It's thinking past, present, future, past, present, future. My right brain just, it's just dealing with right now, right now. Me and you, just right now, what's happening right now? Right now. And it doesn't argue with reality. It goes, oh, this is happening. Hmm. And it, and it doesn't argue with reality. It goes, oh, okay, this is happening. What can I do? What are the opportunities here? What is under my control? What's the gift here? What's the opportunity? What's the possibilities? And it's also my connection with everyone. It's the we. It's the we. It's the kinder, wiser part of us. It's the we, we're all in this together. All right. So we so we can take charge of our brain and elevate our well-being. Personally, my left brain was way overutilized. Yes, I did a lot of things and they were cool and all, and I was accomplishing a lot of things, but I was also creating damage to my body. All systems of my body. Because yeah, I wasn't taking care of myself, right? So I was overutilizing my left brain, and I was underutilizing my right brain, my thriving brain, my brain, my, that side of my brain that is full of peace and joy that deals with reality and will take anything on, no matter what. That's loving what is, because it is. Right? Those programs are there. And we all have them. We all have them. So the problem is we, we, you and I need to use our entire brain. Understanding this is powerful. It's powerful. In fact, there's two things we need to do, I, su I suggest, if we want to take our life to a higher level, no matter what our age is, what our medical status is, we need to try to do this. Number one is some of these programs up here need to be altered. That unhealthy eating program that I had that I thought was healthy was actually unhealthy. That not getting enough sleep, that getting upset with everything, looking for the negative, those programs needed to go. That's my left brain. Some of those programs need to be deleted. Some of them just needed to be improved. That's number one. Number two, and importantly, I had programs over here I was not using in my right brain. My understanding, my empathy, my kindness, I wasn't using these programs as often as I should to the extent that I should. I needed to let my right brain run the show and tell my left brain, here's what I think we need to do. All right. This is powerful. This is powerful. So change. You and I aren't going to get better unless we admit something we're doing or believing needs to change. We need to change our self-limiting belief system to a life-changing belief system. And any little change we can make over the long haul can have a huge impact. A huge impact. And we're never too old or in any condition to try to start working on some of this. And having a support system is huge. You guys have an incredible support system here to look at all this and go, are we doing healthy things? I mean, something simple. Are we having healthy snacks here at the meetings? What kind of movement are we getting in? What else do we need to do? You guys are amazing. You, what you're doing is absolutely incredible. I'm just going to encourage you to take it to the next level. Okay? It works. By doing this, we can go from out of shape to in shape, overweight to ideal weight, depressed to joyous, anxious to peace. It, just, we, we, it all starts with uh, you know all the eyes to the better eye. Okay, And we all have to be outliers. If everybody were doing this, it would be easy. Wouldn't it? If everybody we knew were eating healthy, if everybody we knew were exercising every day, meditating, if everyone we knew were looking at the good in every event, everything happens for a reason. We just have to look for that reason. I never understood that until I started pursuing wellness. No trial has come to you, but what is human? God is faithful and will not let you be tried beyond your strength. It will provide a way out so that you can bear it. My goal, I will find a way out so that I can bear it. We have to be outliers. 
and we have to make health the priority. I always say, would you start building a house and you don't know what the final design looks like? None of us would do that. That'd be crazy. But it's funny, we start trying to be healthy, but we don't know what, what's my destination. What, what, what's my destination? What do I want to, what to try to get, accomplish physically, emotionally, socially, financially, spiritually, and dream big? The problem is not that we reach a, we, we set a goal and we reach our target. The problem is we set a low goal and we didn't reach it. Yeah. So dream big, dream big. I would say even if you miss, you know, reach for the stars, even if you miss, you know, is it reach for the moon, even if you miss, you're among the stars? Okay. So think of, or, or would you pack for a vacation and you don't know where you're going? So first, do like Albert Einstein did. Use your imagination, your gift of fantasy, and go, what is it that I want in relationships, in my finances, in my physical health, my emotion, what is it that I want? Every day I stop and visualize the person I want to be. And the destination I keep, keeps changing because it keeps getting better. I didn't realize I wasn't dreaming big enough. Are you catching this? Okay. All right. So begin with the end in mind. Your GPS needs a dream destination. Go for it. The question is, what would all of us, what would our lives be like if we started doing this and taking our life to a higher level? Not only is it going to help us, it's going to help everyone around us. We're an example for everyone. I can tell you, now I get together with my girlfriends. I go to their houses. Now the food we have is different. Things are changing in my family. I didn't have to tell them anything. They just We just live by example. What was it? Was it St. Francis that said, preach the gospel, if necessary, use words? <laughs> so, you know, what would your life be like? I can tell you personally, it's been nothing short of miraculous. I didn't know that I, so much of my health I could influence. Now, will I always be able to do it? everything? No, I'm going to... I'm on no medicines now, but one of these days I'll probably need to be on something if, as I age. That doctor better help me, okay? But I know that my, my most of my health is going to depend on me, on me. So I can tell you, it's March 28, 2024, we're not done. And I want to be a better version of myself at the end of this year than I am now. There's a better Patsy Shulock out there. And we can all look at it, all aspects of our life, all five or even one or two or whatever, and go, there's a better version out there. There's a better version out there. I want to be the version that God created me to be. But you got to have a why. Let's all have those whys. We have to have a list of why would I want to change my eating or exercise every day or meditate or do or, or start pursuing wellness, more health, more. We got to have a why. I can tell you, I have a lot of whys. I have a whole list of them. But now I even have more whys. I just want to be an example for, for all the cute little beings that have been placed in my path. And I want to let them know things are going to happen to you that you don't want to happen. People may be unkind. Guys may walk out on you. You may develop a medical illness, but you can take it on. There's always something you can do to make situations better. And that's what I love about this organization. You got everybody's hanging in there, helping everybody trying to make things better. So a big applause to all of you. So what does it cost to be healthy? I, remember I asked you, have you ever been pressured to go somewhere you didn't want to go? That's what it costs to be healthy. That's what it's going to cost you. you got to go where you've resisted going. In some aspect, or maybe like me, all aspects of my life, that going where I didn't want to go, like to that first wellness conference in Woe, and some of the, the changes I've had to make. So we hope that you'll travel this journey with us. Uh, so many are relying on you, and I welcome the opportunity to speak in businesses and organizations because uh, I feel like it's it's my life, it's my last mission, and that's my email address. It's my last name at livingwellaware.com. Uh, and last year, uh, Gail knows we did do Living Well Aware 2023, 25 live webinars throughout the year with newsletters, book reviews, uh, and you got some of the uh, the comments from some of the attendees. Well, we're going to be starting Living Well Aware 2024 in May. We're going to ramp it up with, and it's going to have 
live webinars, plus we're going to have all those webinars on an online program so you can go back to them whenever you want, something we didn't do this last year because now people request it. Plus, we're going to have more information that we don't have time to cover in the webinars. Cover everything from stem cells to nutrition, your microbiome, what is proper exercise, and, and book reviews and everything. So all those wellness books that you don't want to read, we read them and summarize them for you. Okay. So and by the way, uh, we just we haven't even put registration up on the website yet. Uh, but if you register today, uh, you get a huge discount just because of what you guys do and everything you're doing here. So you've got some information. If you're interested, Gabe will be there at the table. Uh, and by the way, we do have, and we are going to have private newsletters for people who register, you know, coming out almost every week. But we do have one monthly message that we come out. Uh, we send out uh, that's free to everybody. So once again, I want to thank y'all for first of all being here. Thank you for what you do and supporting everyone. This is what we need: have people supporting each other. So the goal of living well aware, guys, let's live healthy, live happy, let's live holy. So why why are we here? So that we can lift humanity. It's not just about us. It's the we. It's the we. So thank you very much. And it's like I always like to end on the thank you. Though. Yeah. And I'll be over here if you, if you have any questions or anything. Well, let me... thank you. That was awesome. And I hope you guys pick this up too. And then after the meeting, please go to her, her table. Um, okay, you still have to put up chairs, but you go to her table. She'll leave it up. It'll be the last one. Golly, thank you so much. Uh, now I... I understand why when I was reviewing all of the very positive and uh, wonderful comments, you know, I see. And it's inspiring. I was already thinking about myself and how we need to uh, change and do things in my home. Okay, Dave, no more ice cream and cookies, no? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> And when we're taking in a lot of carbs, it creates an oxidative strike, free radical formation, which leads to DNA damage, which leads to inflammation. And I plummeted, but we plummeted carbs. <laughs> we have several lectures in the series just on that. It's not that you can't have those things, but which ones are the healthy ones that you're going to enjoy eating just as much or more that don't cause damage. It's literally creating havoc and disease. We're, we're seeing the results. So we really are. All right. <laughs> there you go. And so what that was for the Zoom audience that we're not able to hear this, so we can still have sweets, but healthy sweets. And uh, we can learn more and sign up to get all of your information. We can learn more about that. So I want to say thank you. A huge thank you. We just appreciate so much. Uh, door prizes, door prizes, door prizes. All right. The ladies are coming up with that. Grab your ticket. It's going to be fun, fun, fun. While they're coming up here with that, I'm going to go on and just let you know next month, April the 25th. <clears throat> and of course, again, April is Parkinson Awareness Month. But April the 25th, uh, Michael J. Fox uh, representatives will be here. So for sure, I last year we had two. Uh, this year, they're thinking if it, they're trying to figure out they're going to send the second one, but for sure they're going to be here. And this is your time to ask all the questions about the latest research. So just know that that's going to be coming. Okay, so let's see here. And then, of course, I want to thank all the volunteers. Thank you for putting up the tables and chairs. I just appreciate it so much. And to all of our sponsors who are here, thank you, thank you. And there we go. And let me see. I'm going to go on and end this. Um, okay. And we are on gallery view now. So everybody see it. Oh, I see Miss Pretty Julie. Julie was there. And Carolyn Becker. And a lot of you guys. Oh, it's awesome to see everyone. Okay, and Elsie. Okay, so where are, where are, here come the tickets. And the door prizes are coming up too. Oh, they're here. Okay. How do you drop a $20 bill there? <laughs> Okay, and, our, and we have our Vanna White runners to give out the uh, yep. gifts. Okay, 
So the very first, ooh, that's like a really cool backpack type thing. Okay, so we'll put it here. And your first number is 312, 312. Oh, we got a winner in the back. All righty, right back there. Okay, and the second door prize. Healthy treat. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, if you don't look at this chocolate honey here. <laughs> I'll tell you. Okay. It's Easter time. Okay. Three, three, four. Three, three, four. Is there a three, three, four? Did you see that, Bunny? Mm -hmm. Oh, we do. Try super. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Well, we'll do right after this, Bunny. Three, three, four. No. Okay. Next number. And that number is 352. Okay. Okay. Yeah, really. 350. Oh, come, come, come. 350. Is everybody checking the numbers? Okay. 329. Well, I'm, uh, okay, now, yeah. You write the book, which is uh, one short chapter on each one of the 11 essential elements, the 276 page workbook that goes with it, uh, and the journal where you can track your results and everything. Uh, that's going to be the door price. And by the way, uh, if you get them here, I'm selling them at like a cost, and there's no tax or anything and all. So, uh, don't get it on the website. If you're considering it, get it here. It's going to be a hell of a lot cheaper. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to get you one back. Here we are. 339. 339. Well, see, that's why they're not supposed to leave. They shouldn't. Yeah, it's it's like, president, president win. 358. Oh, 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 and 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 Patsy saved me a book for sure. I want to. Yeah, I'm I'm buying one. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We got some coffee. Getting Urbana is right there, ready to, to deliver. Three one six. Three one six. Oh, all right. It's always so funny when. By the way, again, these are nice donating prizes. So if, if you ever have something around the house that you think would be a great donated prize, feel free to donate it and I will give it away. <laughs> All right. 309. Do you want, do you, let's give her a choice. Do you want the coffee or do you want the chocolate? Coffee, okay. No, no, she got a vote. Yeah, no. so both they what happened was uh, her caregiver got one. How awesome! Okay, okay, this is the last one. Reese's, Reese's chocolate. Okay, so maybe not quite as healthy, but three zero eight, three zero eight. No, okay. Got another one here? Oh, oh, how beautiful. Okay. Uh, 305. 305. All right. Okay. And we have a gift there. Where did it come from? That's cool. You made it. Okay, this is a handmade journaling thing. It's beautiful that our cat made. So by all means. This is a fabulous gift. Thank you for the donations. Thank you. Okay, and your number, 344. And it's a journal, so you can start keeping up with all of the healthy eating you're doing. 344. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. All, right. all right. Well, thank you again, everyone. And as you know, uh, next month is Parkinson Awareness Month, and we have a great meeting planned. And thank you for putting up the chairs and helping us get everything cleaned up. Have a wonderful and blessed Easter, too. Okay, guys. All right. We can